Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we're going to look at the elevator with objects within it, two masses, a small one and a large one. And we're trying to find the normal forces between the small mass and the large mass and between the large mass and the floor of the elevator in these two cases. The first case is where the velocity upward is constant and it turns out it doesn't matter if the velocity upward is constant or the velocity downwards is constant, you get the same result. In the second example, we have the acceleration upward equal to A. So what are the normal forces, N1 between the small mass and the big one, and N2 being between the big one and the floor of the elevator? So, how do we do that? Well, first of all, let's draw the forces that we are familiar with. We have the small mg pulling downward on the small mass, and we have the big mg pulling down on the big mass. And then we have a normal force pushing back right here, the normal force, which is the reactionary force, and that should be a straight line, of course, which is the reactionary force of the weight of the small mass pushing on the big mass. So we call this N1, which must be equal to the force Mg. And over here, we have the big mass over here pushing down on the floor and the small mass on top of that. So the normal force pushing back called N2 would, would equal to the total mass, which is M plus big M times G. Now, why can we say that? Why is that true? Well, in this case, the reason why that's true is because velocity is constant. And when velocity is constant, A is equal to zero. There's no acceleration. And when A is equal to zero, we can say that the net force, which is equal to the mass times acceleration, must also be zero since the acceleration is zero. All right, so in that case, we simply look at each situation. We're going to try to find N1, and we can say that to find N1, we're going to assume that F net equals mass total times acceleration, which of course must equal to zero. So in other words, F net must equal zero, and the net force acting on this boundary is going to be the force pull pushing up, which is a normal force, minus the force pulling down, which is mg. So we can say that n1 minus mg is equal to zero, or n1 is equal to mg, just like we drew on the diagram. And then, if we're going to try to find the normal force here, we can say that f net, again, is equal to zero, just like before, because there's no acceleration. And the net force in this case is going to be, well, let's see, here we have the normal force pushing up. Let's call that N2 minus the forces pushing down. So that will be the weight of the block, the large block, which is big Mg, minus the weight of the little block, which is pushing down as well on the big block. So that's minus little Mg, and that equals zero, which means that N2 must therefore equal the sum of big Mg plus little Mg, or if you want to write it together, it would be m plus big M times g, exactly what we got over there. So that's why we can write that. But how do things change when the elevator is actually accelerating upward? So what we're going to do then is, again, we're going to draw the forces we know. We have the small m mg right here, and we have the big mg this way. But now we're not going to assume that we know N1 and N2. We know there's going to be some normal force pushing back, let's call it N1, and some normal force pushing back here, let's call that N2, but let's say we don't know N1 and N2. Again, what we're going to do is to find, for the, to find M1, uh, N1 and N2. Again, now we realize that A is not going to be equal to zero. A now has a certain value. So now we have to write that to find N1, we're going to assume that F net equals mass total times acceleration. So we're looking at N1 here, and we're looking at accelerating the small mass M. So F net is going to be the force N1 pushing up minus the Mg pulling down. And that's going to be the mass, the small m, times its acceleration, which is, in this case, not equal to zero. Otherwise, it would be N1 minus Mg equals zero, but now it's N1 minus Mg equals Ma. So notice, here we had N1 minus Mg, Mg equals zero because there was no acceleration. Moving Mg to the other side, we can say that N1 is going to be equal to Ma, 
or mg plus ma. So that's the total force pushing the small mass upward given the acceleration a. In other words, the normal force acting on n1, that's between the surface of the big M times the small m, I should say, uh, on m, is going to be equal to the force required to hold up the weight plus the force required to accelerate the mass m. Now let's do the same for n2. We're going to find n2. To do that, we're going to say that the net force is equal to the total mass times acceleration, and the net force is the force acting on m, the big M right now. So the net force is going to be n2 pushing up minus the big mg pulling down, minus big mg, minus little mg, that's a small weight pushing down on it, so that's mg, and that's going to be equal to the total mass. Well, notice that this normal force has to accelerate both of these, which is going to be m plus big M times acceleration. So here, when we move this to the other side, we can say that n2 is equal to, well, here we have m plus big M times A plus, we have the big M times G plus the little m times G. If we factor out a G here and place it first, we see that the normal force acting on the second big mass is going to be little m plus big M times G plus the little m plus big M times A. And so that means that we have the similar result as we had over here, but n1 only acts on the small mass, n2 acts on both masses since the small mass is on top of the big mass. And this is then the expression for the normal force pushing back against the big mass. It's as if you're actually pushing back against both masses together. And it's going to be equal to the weight of both masses plus the force required to accelerate both masses. And that's how you can tell the difference between the two situations.